Hey Finksters and welcome to today's video where I want to show you the most Pythonic way to check if two ordered lists are identical. Okay, so um, let's. So I, I will show you six different ways and, the, and the, these ways have different strengths and weaknesses but I, I have to admit in this case it's like very clear what is the p most Pythonic way to check if two orders list are identical and uh, so maybe let's dive right into the first method which is also the best one okay so I um, I have like I have uh, created one function um, with the name method one so method I for all six methods so I have created six, six uh, functions and uh, each function takes two arguments two lists basically and it returns whether the two lists are um, Equal, so are equal if they uh, assuming or, or um, considering the order of the elements or not. Okay, so we have like if, if two lists are equal, so in this case we have two different lists, then the method should return false and it does. If they are the same, like for example we have these two lists, L1 and L2 containing the same elements, then it should return true. <coughs> Sorry. Okay, so and uh, the, the easiest way of doing it is to use the uh, equality operator. Okay, so this is also the most Pythonic way. It's also very efficient. It just checks the quality of the different, uh, so element-wise equality of the different elements, and then it also checks whether the length is equal. Okay, so this is like the um, most Pythonic built-in way to do it. It's very concise, very readable, very efficient. So there's no way to look further. Uh, there's no no reason to look further. Um, but to learn about the different methods, to learn about like alternative approaches, and to become uh, like a better coder, better thinker overall. So we will we will dive into more methods, into five more methods, um, starting with a like naive approach, and then uh, coming to more and more advanced approaches that so um, better Python coder would use. But actually, the best Python coder would just use the simplest approach, which is, which is the equality with this uh, double equal sign method okay because it performs element wise operation on lists and many coders don't know this actually okay so let's dive into the uh, second uh, method it's a simple for loop so in our method here uh, it takes again two lists l1 and l2 now we use indexing so this is like a very naive approach we use uh, index i and we and in, in our index i takes on the values from 0 1 2 3 4 until we reach the minimum length of both lists okay so we calculate the minimum length of both lists here in this uh, part of the code and then we go up to this point excluded okay so we have like all positions from 0 to length minus 1 of the minimum length of the list and then we uh, we retrieve the ith element of the first list and the ith element of the second list we check whether they are where whether they are equal if they are um, different then we return false otherwise we return the um, result of the comparison whether the length of the first list is equal to the length of the second list and this is uh, like a, we have two integer values they must be the same otherwise it could be that like if the if the two different lists have um, uh, have a different size and of course the um, the lists are not equal in this case the ordered lists are not equal okay so therefore we need to check this yeah because I mean it could happen that both that here we don't return false going over this loop but one list is larger or has more elements than the other list and therefore if you would return true right away without this check then this would be, would uh, return true even if the lists are different okay so um, therefore we need to check the length here so this is the second method and it also works so if you um, if you put in the same results we get in the value false if you if you run this code but it's not the most Pythonic way because this indexing um, is just it's just a Python coder will avoid using indexing if there are other ways of doing it. Okay, and one other way is to use the zip function. You see now here this is a hassle with the range function and the indexing scheme and accessing the elements here. It's actually a hassle, and there's a there, there's a much better way of doing it. This is the zip function. The zip function you pass in two iterables and then it pairs together the ith elements of these iterables in tuples and now you can like the, you can assign the first tuple value to the variable named x and the second tuple value to variable named y then a zip function is an iterator so you go over all these pairs one by one by one and <coughs> um, yeah it still may, may happen that one list is larger than the other list in this case it will just pair the elements until it reaches the last element of the smaller list and then the remaining elements they will be just 
uh, skipped in the zip function. Okay, and uh, so we iterate over all pairs of elements and we check are they dissimilar, are they different? If they are different, we return false right away because we know that the lists do not have the, um, uh, the same elements. So therefore it should be false and otherwise we, we return the length comparison as done before. So if the length now is the same and they have the same elements, then also the lists are um, same and it, sh it sh should return true. Okay, so this, this method, like this third method is much better than, better than the second method and um, yeah, sometimes you see something on those lines, yeah, if you don't want to use a comparison. Then, then one advantage is that you can have any comparison metric here between two elements. This is like a big advantage, I would say, um, compared to method one even, because here you can check two lists for equality, but then um, then your metric is element-wise equality. Yeah? But what if you want to do some, for example, element-wise matching? So you compare two lists of strings and you want to, and you assume that two strings are equal if they contain the same stub or the same prefix or so. And then you could use a regular expression, for example, here in this part, instead of comparing equality, you can check if one, one prefix matches the other string or so, yeah? And um, so you can do arbitrary complicated matches here. So it's, it's uh, much more customized behavior. Um, and it's, uh, it has some advantages. Um, uh, in comparison to the first method and it has a lot of advantages. I think I would say it has only advantages in comparison to the second method. So the third method is I would say the most Pythonic way if you want to do something ad more advanced than just checking equality because then you could use the uh, double um, equation operator. Okay, so then uh, fourth method <clears throat> it's even more so even more so Pythonic so it's, it, it does actually the same but not in a loop because the Python coder He's always like, if, he, if, a, if, a, if a very good Python coder sees a loop, especially a, sh a loop with a small loop body, then he will immediately think, oh, there is probably a um, list comprehension or generator expression way of expressing the same thing. And this is what we do in uh, method four. We use the sum function, the zip function, and the length function in, compare, uh, in combination to solve the same problem. So first of all, we, um, we get, we, we create a variable called num equal and this is a number of equal elements in list one and list two okay and um, so you see it's uh, it's a result of a sum function and the sum function here it's a use a generator expression with the expression x is equal to y so if two elements x and y are the same then this will evaluate to true so then the true value is represented by integer one so therefore um, if we sum this we will sum the number of times this evaluates to true. Okay, so two elements, a pair of elements x and y um, are the same actually. If it, if it evaluates to false, then it will be zero, so it will be ignored in the final sum, right? Um, and now we need to define the context in our generator expression. The context goes over all pairs x, y in the zip, fu in the zip function. You have already seen this in the previous results. So we pair, so we have two lists, so list one, list two, and we pair together the ith element of the list and we sum over all of them yeah and uh, summing over all of them give, uh, give us a number of elements that are equal and of course the number of elements that are equal should be the same as the length the number of total elements in the first list and the number of total elements in the second list if this is the case so the number of equal elements in both lists is the same as the size of those lists then of course all elements are equal so therefore the result is um, true and uh, both lists are equal. So this is a very Pythonic way. And the nice thing here is that you can also customize the equality uh, metric. Yeah, So you can use the um, element wise, like the equal operator for element wise testing uh, equality, but you can also use regular expression or other matching criteria to, uh, to customize the behavior here, uh, how to check for two elements, whether they are equal or not. And, um, and, yeah, other, and it also uses like advanced Python functionality like generator expression, the sum function and zip function. So this is very concise. It's more concise than having this loop in the third method and it is equally powerful. So this would be probably be my preferred way of doing it if I don't want, if I want to do something more fancy than just checking uh, element wise equality or identity, identity operation in lists. Okay, and then this, this uh, fifth way is, uh, is a way I would not recommend to use. It's uh, based on functional programming. Some Python coders love functional programming, but actually Guido van Rossum, the founder of Python, 
Uh, he didn't like functional programming too much because oftentimes you, there's an easier, more understandable, more readable, and even more efficient way of uh, solving the same problem with list comprehension generator expressions, which you have seen in the previous example. Okay, but anyways, you can use it. You can use the map function. The map function um, applies a certain function to each element, to each element in a given iterable. And if you pass multiple iter iterables, then it will combine those iterables. Yeah, so you pass two iterables, then again, like the zip function, it will group the ith elements and then it will put the ith elements into your lambda function. We call them x and y and now we check whether they are equal. So we again use the equality operation of the map function um, on, on all elements in our two lists. And our result then simply reduces, so it reduces this whole um, iterable to a single va Boolean value. And this single Boolean value indicates whether all elements that are tested are also equal to each other in the in the in the first list and the second list. And uh, we and how do we how do we aggregate all the values in our equal uh, map iterable? Yeah, basically we take two elements and we combine them with the AND operation by passing a lambda function as the as the reduce function. Um, yeah, and the AND operation then of course if uh, like if you have if two elements, so remember each, um, so one element in in this in this map iterable, it's a boolean, it's a it's an iterable of boolean values. So and it is true if the uh, if the respective elements are the same at this position. And so if you have two truth value, basically we want to um, we want to find out whether all um, values in our equal map are true. If all of them are true, then the lists have the same elements, at least up to the minimum number of elements of the uh, of the smaller list. Um, so therefore, we just combine them with a global map. So this is basically what the reduce function does, and uh, then we again combine our results. So if if all of them are true, this only means that um, the elements of the smaller list are the same in the same order um, as the, the elements in the larger list. But of course, in the larger list, we also have additional elements. So therefore, if, the, if there is one list that is larger than the other one, it should also return false. So we also check for equality of the length of both lists here. Okay, so this is like a functional approach, but it's very complicated. It doesn't have to be so complicated. So I would advise if you want to use the functional approach, approach then use the all function. It's uh, here in this uh, sixth, sixth method. Um, we basically don't have a reduce function. We don't need to import the func, um, so the func tools reduce function, as we did in the fifth uh, method, because we just use the all function. All function we pa pass the same result of the map function that checks for equality of all pairs of elements, and um, gives us a, an iterable of boolean values. Now we want to simply want to check are all of those boolean values true. And this is done by the uh, all function as well. So instead of using the reduce function with the um, with the element, so like pairing uh, with the with the end operation, applying the end operation repeatedly until there's only one element left, we simply use the all function. The all function checks whether all elements in a given iterable are true. And if this is the case, then the result is true. And then we also need to check whether the length is equal. If this is the case, then we can uh, return true to the global execution. Okay. So if you run this. Um, you get the mean, like some faults, some truths. You can check the code in the um, in the article I, I link to below this video. And uh, yeah, so if you if you if you struggled with some of those functions, like the reduce function or the map functions or so, then I would advise you check out my book Python One Liners. It uh, uh, appeared in 2020 with no starch press, and it um, consists of a lot of tips and Python tricks, and it will show you all of those. Function, the all function, map function, lambda functions, reducing stuff, the length function, the list comprehension, generate expressions. So all of these Python tricks that are important to write concise, effective Python code are addressed in my book, Python One Liners. So check out the book, uh, Python One Liners. Just Google it. Check it out on Amazon. Check it out um, via the link I provide in the description below. Thanks for watching this video, and see you in the next video. Bye.